Hey, geeks and gamers. What? What? What is this? Is this a new episode of The Games That Shaped Me in Oral History? It sure is. I've brought back everyone's favorite series. Hopefully somebody's favorite series. For Atari Week. And uh, who knows? I may keep this going as a regular part of my schedule. I haven't done one of these since January 31st, 2022, when I did Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, I didn't mean to drop the games that shaped me in oral history. <laughs> I, I, I just forgot, and I never started back. Uh, but welcome to a very special episode of the games that shaped me in oral history, because today we are talking about the Activision Anthology and I'm also airing this episode on Thanksgiving. So thank you for giving this a listen. And get ready to have your ears tantalized with the stories of the Ant the Activision anthology for the PlayStation 2. Now this is Atari week, and I wanted to make everything this week Atari related. And while this is a PS2 game, it's a compilation of atari 2600 games not just any atari 2600 games but it's a compilation of activision anthology the activision uh games for the atari 2600 now in terms of gaming history it is kind of uh fun to note that activision you could sort of say was the first like major third-party developer they probably weren't the first third third-party developer but they were the first third-party developer of note uh activision was made up of a bunch of atari employees that uh got tired of not getting recognition for their work left formed activision and then started producing games that uh to some people including me for some some instances are better atari games than atari themselves put out um, some real classic stuff. Now, growing up, I didn't have an Atari 2600. I didn't get an Atari 2600 till I was about 16. I got one from a friend of mine who used to, uh, well, actually, he was the guy that like taught me how to video edit and stuff. Um, older dude. And um, he actually gave me his old 2600 and some games. And then whenever I got a little bit older than that, um, you know, in my mid 20s i started to really get into atari and started collecting that stuff and really exploring all of the uh, you know a lot of the library but this is really where my atari story starts and also is interesting to me how i got here so let's all go back to the year 2002 and or 2003 i'm not sure what year exactly it was very early and somewhere around 2002, 2003, I was about in second or third grade. Um, yeah, um, the story starts where all good stories begin at the retail chain Big Lots. <laughs> you ever been to a Big Lots? It's like a, it's like a big uh, department store, uh, but I think they take a lot of back stock or like over overflow from other stores and then, and then mark it down. Um, Big Lots. It's a store that I used to frequent a lot with my family. I still do go to Big Lots quite a bit. I think I, a couple years ago I bought a bed from Big Lots. Uh, nice bed. It's the one I have now. And um, back in the day, they used to actually carry video games. Now I, th I think like they, they still carry like Blu-rays or DVDs maybe, CDs. I doubt they have like video games like, like they did back then. Um, Back then, I, I used to be able to go and find some decently priced games for, like, the PlayStation 2 and stuff. And we weren't the, the wealthiest family in the world, so getting brand new games was not common. Usually, I would get used games, games from yard sales, or games that were marked down, like, at Big Lots. I think the, I, I think the last game I bought at Big Lots was, um, I think I was there, I'm trying to think of what year this was, maybe 2012? Somewhere around that time, 2012, 2013, and I bought on the PS3 for $10 each. I got a copy of Yakuza Dead Souls and a copy of Binary Domain. They had both those games, both by the same team, oddly enough. They had both those games there at, at Big Lots, and I bought those. Um, 
going back to 2002, though, I remember we were at Big Lots as a family. Uh, we would go from time to time. And I was looking through the video game section, as were my parents. My parents also like video games. My mom more so than my dad, but my dad does still like some video games like I'll talk about today. Um, and I remember we got two games um, from Big Lots that day. I got a game, which my game was a copy of Ape Escape 2, a game that also I played a shit ton of, and I could talk about that that series another time on this show. Um, they got the Activision Anthology. Uh, I didn't know what this was, but hey, a brand new game to play on my PlayStation 2. Sign me up. You know, I'm not going to complain. I'm a dumb kid. I just want to play games. Um, so I remember we, we get home, and the first thing they want to do is play the Activision Anthology. They're very excited for this game. Very excited. And, of course, you know, whenever you're a kid and your parents are excited to play a video game, it kind of makes you excited to play a video game because, you know, you're kind of like sharing in the sharing in the hobby together. I didn't, I didn't understand their excitement fully, but I, I was there for it, you know. Uh, popped it in, and it turns out this was a big collection of of old Atari games published by Activision. Who would have thought? Uh, not me at the time, because I didn't know what the hell an Atari was, or what the hell an Activision was. Uh, but I remember we started playing, and the first game they started playing was a little game called River Raid. Now, River Raid is a game that came out for the 2600 in 1986. It's like a shooter where you uh, control a plane and you're flying up like a river and you're raiding it and you're like shooting shooting boats and other planes and, and you know you have to collect gas and stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's a very addictive shooter. And it's a game that both my parents loved to death. So, of course, it's, it's the first thing they wanted to play. Um... And I, I, I remember watching them play River Raid. I played myself, but I was really bad at it at that time. I'm Honestly, I'm, I'm still bad at, at River Raid. But I remember watching them play this game. And the graphics were so much worse <laughs> than what I was used to on the PlayStation 2, obviously. But um, I, I've always kind of enjoyed older stuff. I mean, honestly, that's probably why I'm so into Atari now. Um, even as a kid. I was, I was into, like, retro games, and I was into, like, cartoons from the 1930s and shit. Like, I, I, love, I love experiencing things from way before my time. And uh, I remember watching them play this game, but something interesting was happening at the same time. There was music. If you play Atari games, you should know. Atari games don't really have music. Uh, no, the, the music was, like, a collection of songs from like the 1980s um and i have some of them brought up here there's there's actually a spotify playlist you could find um that it, it does a pretty good job with some of the ones that i remember um and some of these songs are like stuck in my eye uh, stuck in my eyes I was, I was reading one of the names stuck in my ears and my eyes i guess <laughs> now because i'm looking at them um so there's songs like Pulling Muscles from The Shell by Squeeze. That song's on my personal playlist. I love that song. Always Something There to Remind Me by Naked Eyes. That's why I said eyes a minute ago, because Naked Eyes, I was reading that. Uh, Mexican Radio by Wall of Voodoo. I love that song. The Tide is High by Blondie. I'm a big Blondie fan, so that's cool. Um, th just, just a ton of songs were included, like 80 songs. And uh, it was very cool at the time, because I... I I don't know. I didn't really have a lot of experience with like that type of 80s music. Um, the music on the radio in 2002 was like Green Day and uh, I don't even know, like No Doubt and so you know and, and stuff like that. It was basically, 2002 was basically still the 90s. Let's not lie. Um, and my parents liked older music, but they listened to a lot of like, uh, like Ozzy, like Ozzy Osbourne and stuff. So um, a lot, a lot heavier so it's my first time really getting to like listen to a lot of like eight like eighties pop or like eighties you know what you would listen to on the on the on like the the top hits radio stations you know in the eighties. Uh, very cool for them to include that on this anthology. I don't think I've seen another collection really attempt this because 
again, Atari games don't really have music, so, like, it really helps to, like, set the tone, put you in that mind space. Like, I, playing it, I, I feel like I'm in the 80s, even though I was, I've never been in the 80s, you know? So, there's a, a bunch of games on the Activision Anthology that I really enjoyed. And I'm going to go down the list here and say some of them that I've really enjoyed. And they're in alphabetical order here. Uh, so I really enjoyed Barnstorming. It's a game where you have to fly an airplane through barns and avoid, uh, well, I don't know what they are, like wind windmill things and birds. That was a lot of fun. I really liked that game. Cosmic Arc, which is a game by iMagic. That's a great game. Crackpots, which I talked about on the 19th. That was my first uh, uh, review for Atari Week. Uh, Crackpot was great. Demon Attack, which is a great, uh, another iMagic game, it is a great, like, uh, Galaxian style uh, shoot 'em up. Dolphin is an interesting game. I would love to review Dolphin sometimes. It's a game that relies on sound. You have to, like, listen to the sounds. It's 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 sort of trying to do, like, a like an echo sonar thing because you're a dolphin. Pretty, pretty cool. And Enduro was a cool, like, racing game uh, for its time. Fishing Derby was one that I played a lot with my mom. Um, probably not the best game ever, but it's a fun. Also, Freeway, which is like a dumb Frogger like type game, but it's like competitive head to head. That one's a lot of fun. Frostbite was one that's also very Frogger like. That's also a ton of fun. It, it's almost like a better Frogger. Hero is a great like platforming type game for the 2600. Uh, Kaboom was one that I really got into. Um, even though back then I didn't understand that the Atari had like paddles because I was, I was a kid playing a PlayStation game. So, um, the control is kind of weird on the PlayStation version, but when you're a kid, you're playing a game, you just kind of assume like that's, that's how it's, you know, meant to be. But turns out it was meant to be way better than that, <laughs> but I still liked it. Keystone Capers, which I did a review of recently. That was one that I played a lot of. Laser Blast. I love that game. I love Mega Mania. That's a great shooter. Oink. I would love to review Oink sometime. Oink is a really creative game based on the Three Little Pigs. I really like that game. Of course, Pitfall. You have to talk, you have to talk about Pitfall. That's like the, the big Activision game. People love Pitfall. Plaque Attack was a shooter where you have to protect teeth. That's a weird game. Uh, I've already mentioned uh, River Raid. Pretty cool. Um, and I'm, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff here. Spider Fighter, I reviewed that one. That's a game that I played a ton of on this collection. And I mean a ton of on this collection. Uh, and like I said, I skipped over a ton of games. And I love them. I don't, I'm looking here and I'm seeing that maybe some of these weren't on mine. Let me see if any of the ones that I listed weren't. Cosmic Arc wasn't on my collection. And... Um, I think that's it so that one i didn't play as a kid uh i don't i didn't remember playing much of it i know what i i played demon attack which is what's an iMagic game turns out i didn't play cosmic arc but i have played cosmic arc a ton uh later in life so i can still speak on that game being great um the wikipedia page here says which version of the activision anthology has which games and apparently the Windows one has everything, as in, like, the other ones. Mac, PS2, Ga Ga Game Boy Advance, Digi Blast. What the hell's a Digi Blast? Android, iOS, and PSP have, like, a, a, a spattering of different games. So, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I think that this is, like, and in terms of me being an Atari fan, this is really where it started. I think shortly after I played the Activision Anthology... I got one of those uh, plug and plays, and it was like themed after the uh, 7800, and I played that one a bit. Um, but this is really where it started, and really where like some of my earlier interests in um, retro games started with these like game collections of PS2, and this was one of my earliest ones, uh, along with like some of like the Namco uh, uh, museums, the Taito Legends, and like the Sonic Genesis, or not, the, the Sonic Mega Collection and stuff. Um, that's really where, like, my interest in this, these types of older games came from outside of me playing, you know, the couple games I had for, like, the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Also, like I said, my parents loved this. Um, they played a lot of these games when they were relevant back in the 80s. Uh, I know my mom 
for example, she and her dad played a ton of Atari back in the day, and I'm pretty sure she had a bigger collection than I do now back then because it's it's it seems like all the time whenever we're talking about Atari, she's like, oh yeah, I had that. Oh yeah, I had that. Oh yeah, I had that one. So yeah, it seems like they they had a big collection of Atari games. Kind of jealous that they got to experience that when it was you know relevant. Um, but yeah, I, I could really tell this this collection meant something to them as well, and uh, is sort of like a stepping stone with my relationship with games and my relationship with them. Um, a lot of times, whenever I was a kid, we would have busy weeks. You know, we would have like weeks where I had school, then you know my dad had to work, and then my mom had to work, and then like on Saturdays we'd go visit family and stuff. So we really get to spend, you know, like other than like maybe dinner time, we didn't really get to spend a lot of time together. So a lot of the times on Sundays we would have like a family day. Like you, you, we don't go see friends, we don't go see family that day. We just spend time together. So on family days, a lot of times we could pick what we wanted to do. Uh, Board, you know, play a board game, play a video game, watch a movie, go outside, throw a ball. I don't, you know, whatever. Uh, of course, me being a, a kid that likes video games, I want to play video games a lot of times. So, a lot of times, we'd play this. We'd play the Activision Anthology on the PlayStation 2. Um, and I really had a lot of uh, good memories of playing this with my parents. And, um, really getting like to learn the games with them learn some of these more complicated games with them they would teach me how to play them um yeah there's a lot of fun multiplayer games on this collection so it was always very cool and of course whenever i was on my own too i you know i'd be in my room playing the playstation and you know there's a lot of times where i would i would pop this collection in and just kind of explore you know there's so many games to explore on this live, you know, and, and and this collection, so that was very meaningful to me too. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I think that it's an underappreciated collection of games. I don't think Activision has done anything like this since. Uh, of course, now I think like all these games are now owned by uh, Microsoft because Microsoft swallowed up um, Activision this year. So uh, who knows? Maybe Microsoft will like put out uh, a collection like this on um game pass or something who knows like uh or like even uh, they might just put one out in general i know like uh blizzard did like an arcade collection a year or so ago which was actually pretty decent um so i would love to see like the activision side of things i don't these games aren't really referenced anymore uh, outside of like a few cute little cameos like i think in um crash team racing nitro fueled there were like stickers for um, River Raid and and uh, Barnstorming and Freeway, I think. Um, so that was cool. Uh, yeah, I just really appreciate this collection for getting me into Atari and getting me into video game history. Um, another cool aspect of this collection was the fact that uh, you can get certain scores in the game, and they would you would get patches like uh, like 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 patches you you know you would sew on the clothing like jackets and stuff which sounds silly in a video game context but it's cool when you think about the fact that that's something that activision used to do you could submit uh, you know a photo of your television showing your high score in the game and they would send you a patch for that game that's awesome also i love the fact that you could unlock commercials i used to try to unlock all all the commercials for these games and then i would watch said commercials of course if i unlocked them why wouldn't i watch them um and it was also fun just kind of seeing that element too in a time before like youtube and easy internet access it was cool to see like what what 80s commercials were like how they advertise these video games i remember some really silly ones on this collection uh vaguely i don't it's 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 been a while since I've watched them. Maybe that's a fun idea for a, a video watching like Atari commercials at, at some point. But um, yeah, it's it's uh it's good to look back on a collection like this now because I can really appreciate like how I got here, where I am now, and what I'm into now. You know, uh, I mean, I'm I'm dedicated a full week to Atari content this week. 
And uh, that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the Activision Anthology in my life. If I didn't get to play the Activision Anthology and really experience what it had to offer. So, thank you, Activision Anthology. Thank you to my parents for introducing me to Atari and, through this collection and also playing the games with me as a kid. And uh, thank you to you at home. I give thanks to everybody that's listening to this episode. Uh, let me know if you would like more episodes of the games that shaped me. And it's something that I might and be up to doing you know, more of in the future. Um, it's a series that I'd like, but I don't know. I, uh, I stopped doing it for some reason. Who, who knows why I did that? <laughs> Not even me. Um, so please enjoy your Thanksgiving. Uh, eat your turkey, eat your stuffing, eat your cranberry sauce, unless you're not like in the U.S. and stuff where this holiday means nothing to you. Uh, still eat some food because that's the best. Okay, look, I I don't like Thanksgiving. I, th I think the the origins of the holiday is bullshit, stupid, but the food is fantastic. So really, it's a it's it's a holiday of food for me, <laughs> where I just get to gorge myself till I'm. I'm fat and full, then fall asleep on a on a chair or something. Um, so enjoy food, enjoy time with your family, uh, give thanks to the everybody in your life, and give thanks to Atari. Thank you, Atari. We all love you, every single one of us. That's right. We all we all do. Um, thanks for listening. This has been the games that shaped me in oral history. I just gave you oral. in the form of history i had to get a little pause in there and uh i hope you guys have a good day bye game time yeah got this new video game by activision called freeway i just plug it into my atari video game system and really impress the ladies because with freeway you gotta be real good to race your chicken across 10 lanes of heavy tra traffic you gotta dodge speeding cars roaring trucks sometimes you make it without getting your feathers ruffled sometimes <laughs> Ladies, I'm only human. Freeway by Activision.